Hi, I'm Richard Byrne. In this video, I want to show you 10 of my favorite Google Docs features that I think are often overlooked, but are quite handy if you know where to find them and how to use them. Let's go ahead and get started here. And the first thing that I want to show you is a strategy I use for helping students organize group notes. And we're going to do this by inserting a table. Now, let's say I have three students in each group and they're doing a little jigsaw reading activity and I want them to each record three notes from the reading and share that with their group. So I'm gonna put in this table with student one, student two, and student three. And in the case of a real classroom, I'd put in their actual names. But now my students, can write their notes inside that little table. And I have found that this is a great way to give students a little bit of structure when they're trying to take notes as a group. And this way they don't end up writing over each other quite as much as they do if they didn't have that little structure. Now, the second feature that can be really helpful is again in that insert table and that is special characters and we can see here with special characters we have arrows and various types of arrows like this one here like the right words pointing arrow let's say i insert that one well there it is and if i want to make it bigger i'll just highlight it and then increase my font size until it gets bigger and so that's one option with those special characters, but I can also go back up here, insert special characters, and we have all kinds of categories and types here. Let's say we wanna use emojis, and we have all of these emojis in here. We can do people and reactions, animals, plants and food. I wanna put in an apple, maybe a couple of apples. And so I have a couple of apples in there. And again, I can change the size of those by just highlighting them and changing my font option up there at the top. Really handy. So you don't have to remember keyboard shortcuts or anything else. You can just go to those special characters and you'll find all kinds of, well, special characters. So next, let's take a look at another way to keep track of tasks when you're using Google Documents. So last summer, Google introduced this little checklist option. And so you can create a checklist, say, take out the papers, take out the trash, and don't talk back. And then you can cross those off as they are completed. Now, if you have shared this document with somebody else, you can both keep track of those tasks. And the nice thing about this is, if we go to the, our, our version history, we can look at that version history and look in more detail and see when things have been added or crossed off there we have it. Let's go further up here. And we can see some more. And let's go further up here. And there's our current version right there. So we'll use that version. And I'm going to uncheck that one. And now it's back to needing to be done. Now, while we're on this topic of task management, this task list or checklist in Google Docs is great if you're sharing the document with somebody else and you want them to see it, or you just want to keep that task list in one document. But if you're working on a bunch of Google documents throughout the day, you might want to use the task function on the right-hand side here. And you can add a task. Let's say our task is going to be make a list of cool Google Docs things. And we'll put the list in here. 
let's say make a video about these things. And I want to have that done by Wednesday, February 9th at, well, let's say 3.30 p.m. Now I have that task and my list of tasks that I can keep track of regardless of which Google document I happen to be looking at. Now for the rest of this video, we're gonna switch over to my other Google account where I have a different sample Google document set up. And I wanna show you a neat little feature for organizing long documents. So you can see here, this is my, I'm gonna write this as my introduction. There's my introduction. I'm gonna make that a little bit bigger. The bold. And I'm gonna put in this section here about Tom Brady. And I'm gonna make that bold. And if we go over here to the left-hand side, we'll show our document outline, and we see introduction and Tom Brady. And you can just click on those and jump to those sections. So just put in a little header here, and you'll have this table of contents created for you. And the nice thing is, if you decide to, let's say, download this as a PDF, those links between the sections will be intact as well and work just like they do in a Google Doc. Now, in my Google document, in this particular account, I'm using the standard Arial font as my default. And in fact, my default is still the default setting for any Google Docs user, which is Arial 11 point font. Let's say that I have changed my font and I really like the lobster font. Now, I don't really like the lobster font, but for this example, let's say that I really like the lobster font and I always want the lobster font to be my default font when I start a new Google document. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna highlight this, have all of my text highlighted, and let's go up here to our format option and in paragraph styles, go all the way down to the bottom and select options. And we'll say save as my default styles. And so now whenever I create a new Google document in this account, my default font is going to be the lobster font. All right, so now I have my lobster font and I always I want to change it back because that's kind of hard to read. So I'm going to go back to my Arial font and I go back to format, paragraph styles, options and save that as my default styles. So then I'm back to Arial font as my default font style. Now, let's take a look at one of the little preferences that can be really handy in Google Docs. And that is here in our tools menu, we'll go to preferences. And you can see here, we have our general preferences. And I have found it kind of annoying when it automatically detects lists, not links, lists. And I do like having it automatically correct spelling. And I do like the smart reply suggestions. Now over here in substitutions, we'll see the default settings are for things like the copyright symbol, registered trademark symbol, fractions, uh, and change, there we go, care of, the TM, there we go. But I wanna add in my own. So one of the things that happens sometimes is students make a typo on my name and they write B-R-Y-N-E instead of B-Y-R-N-E. Well, I wanted to automatically substitute Brian with burn so that it's automatically spelled correctly in the document. Now that only applies to my account, but you could teach students to do that in their own accounts so that they automatically have substitutions made for things that are commonly misspelled like names or anything else that you want them to correct. Now, one of the other features that's helpful for students that I think they often overlook 
is right up here in this tools menu again. Let's go into our dictionary. And yes, dictionary does exactly what you think. It gives a definition for any word that students type into it, like also, but it also provides synonyms. So if your students need a little thesaurus, this is a good option for them. Particularly if you're writing comments that say things like, please use a different word here because you've read the same word 75 times and they need a new adverb. Well, maybe you have them go up there and use that dictionary tool and find some other phrases and other words to use. And last but not least is the built-in camera options in Google Documents that are really handy for taking pictures of things like written work and inserting them into a Google document. Let's take a look at how that works right now. So to use the camera option in Google Documents, go up here to the Insert Image option or use the Insert menu and select Image and then select Camera. And that will turn on the webcam and your students can hold up their notebooks like this, take that picture and insert it right into the document. Now, they can still go in here and make some adjustments to it. Let's say we wanna do all image options. We wanna do the size and positioning. Right? We can change all of those things over here. Text wrapping, we can handle all of that. And we can also go up here and just click and drag to make it smaller that way. So that's a handy little option if you want students to insert that image into their document. And I should also point out that let's say we make the image really big here and we want to crop the image so that you don't have to look at my face. You can just look at the notebook. And we have now just the notebook in my document. Now, if I want to change it back, I just hit Control Z to undo some of the cropping that I just did. Now, the last thing we're gonna look at Let's insert a watermark into the document. So let's insert, go to the insert menu. We're gonna add this watermark of text and we're going to write draft and click done. And now we have draft as a watermark on the document itself. You can do that to write the words confidential or anything else that you'd like on the document. So those are 10 Google document features that I think are really handy, but are often overlooked by students and some teachers. Give them a try and see how they work for you. As always, for more things like this, please check out freetechforteachers.com or subscribe to my YouTube channel.